Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. Change is in the air thanks to Battle for Zendikar hitting standard and some old cards are finally getting their day in the sun thanks to new pieces. It's almost poetic. A lot of you, like so many, have been trying to get hardened scales on the map. Well, I think it just might have happened. With a few key cards from Battle for Zendikar and a shift in the meta, I think it might be time. Let's tech this bad boy and if you enjoy the video, make sure to uh, hit that like button and let us know what other decks you want tacked. It helps out a lot. Enjoy. Green-White Hardened Scales is a relatively simple deck in that most of it synergizes pretty well. Instead of being X-color good stuff, it's an actual deck with an actual purpose. I know, crazy, right? Anyways, let's get these lands out of the way. It won't take long since, again, super simple deck and only two colors. Play sets of both Windswept Heath and Canopy Vista are pretty necessary. The deck also runs three wooded foothills to help with deck thinning. After that, it's just nine forests and two planes and that's it, 22 lands. Less than average for a standard deck right now, but again, only two colors and a seriously low mana curve. So everyone knows what's going on. Hardened Scales as a deck name is named after the card it's designed around. Every time something gets a counter, it gets that many counters plus one more counter. It may seem lackluster, but the ability is powerful, especially with the creatures this deck is running. Remember, the entire deck is designed around this idea. Counters are valuable here, more valuable than in most other strategies, so keep that in mind. We'll begin at the bottom of our creature curve with a playset of Servant of the Scale. A normally eh card with hardened scales, this is a 1 mana 2-2 two, two that moves its counters when it dies. Even if you don't get the hardened scales trigger, this is still a 1 mana 1-1 one, one that will trigger hardened scales later when it dies and moves its counters. It'll net you plus 1 plus 1 in the long run is basically what I'm saying. The other one drop in the deck is a new card, Endless One, Playset Incoming. There has been some talk about this already. Because of its sheer simplicity, it's valuable anywhere on your curve. 2 mana 2-2, two, two, 5 mana 5-5, five, five, it's always just okay. With Hardened Scales, this becomes real good. 4 mana 5-5 five, five seems great in this standard. 2 mana 3-3, three, 3 three mana 4-4, four, four, just applied anywhere and this plus Hardened Scales is incredibly good. Definitely one of the reasons this deck is more powerful now than before. Endless One is the most Hydra non-Hydra I've ever seen. Yes, please. Moving up our curve, we hit our 4 Avatar of the Resolute. One of the most powerful early drops in Standard right now, this deck is where it shines. Drop a turn 1 Endless One or Servant of the Scale and turn 2 Avatar? That's a 4-3 Reach Trampler on turn 2. That's hilarious and nearly impossible to deal with for at least a turn most of the time. Get one late game? No problem, it gets counters based on whatever else has counters. Unlike most strong early drops, this one doesn't fall off nearly as hard thanks to its synergy with your deck. See what I'm getting at here? Everything gets along. It's like one big happy family. Oh, this is so cute. Speaking of cute, our other playset 2 drop is obviously Hanger Backwalker. You can play it for 4 or 6 or whatever you want, but let's be real, you're dropping this for 2 most of the time. With Hardened Scales in play, that's a free Thopter. With that ability, more free Thopters. Most of the time you're going to be paying 1 and tapping it to add 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters to it. The Walker and Hardened Scales together may be the most busted combo in this deck. You get a Scales trigger every time you activate the ability, come on, that's brutal. If there isn't a removal spell quickly, you do realize your opponent is going to have to deal with at least, what, 6 Thopters in a few turns, 10 Thopters a few turns later? It's just stupid. It's a stupid combo. This deck is just chock full of value creatures. We're done with 2 drops, which brings us to our strongest creatures, the 3 drops. 4 Mana Gorger Hydra. Do I even need to explain this? Whenever a player casts a spell, that means that your opponents trigger the Hydra as well. They trigger the Hydra with scales in play, that's plus 2 plus 2 every spell. Hard removal is necessary against your deck. It'll take 1-2 to two turns for the Hydra to get out of control, especially with Trample. Talk about a clock. Next up is another Battle for Zendikar All-Star and Undergrowth Champion. While it doesn't innately come with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, the counters have more value than just power and toughness. Being able to negate damage by removing counters is a powerful ability. With Hardened Scales and 7 Fetch Lands, it isn't impossible to make this creature unkillable in combat. 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on every landfall trigger, that's exactly what you want and that's why we're running 4 of them. The last two creatures in the deck are Obs and Falconers. I know, we're going real deep on this counter plan. There are a ton of Outlast creatures and other creatures that have counters to choose from. The Falconer gives everything flying and that's why we're using it. Along with the fair casting cost, cheap Outlast, trigger cost, and the big butt, but honestly, flying makes this amazing. Even if you don't Outlast this ever, it's basically a 3-man enchantment that gives all your creatures flying since they'll always have counters on them. 
The Falconer is the secret weapon in the deck, but because it's a little clunkier than the other creatures in the list, it's a two of and not a playset. But yeah, Outlast plus Harden Scales, almost like they planned that out. Weird. That's 26 creatures in total, which leaves us with 12 non-creature spells. We already mentioned Harden Scales a couple times, hope you didn't miss that. Running four of them, obviously. We're also running a playset of Dromoka's Command. The card is cheap and effective. Ignoring the amazingly synergistic plus one plus one counter at instant speed ability, you can use it as removal for either a creature or an enchantment, or even protect one of your creatures or your face from a burn spell. You get two of these for four mana, just good value. Plus again, triggering hardened scales in combat, it's so unfair. The last spell in the deck is Feet of Resistance, another four of. This protects our creatures and just so happens to add a plus one plus one counter as well. How convenient is that, am I right? Seriously, this is what we're looking for. This deck invests a lot of mana and turns into some of its creatures. Feet of Resistance is a great way to protect them against most anything in standard right now. There are exceptions, but let's be real. There are always exceptions to everything. Feet is great and a place that is well worth running. So what are we trying to do here? The deck is running 26 creatures, so it is on the aggressive side, especially since we don't run anything above 3 converted mana cost. Things happen very quickly. While we want to build up our threats with counters, we don't necessarily need to do that all the time. Don't hold back often. Even with your Servant of the Scale on 1 mana, drop a 2 drop and swing in with the guy. Whether you have Hardened Scales or not is irrelevant. You are much faster than most strategies and you need to create a solid board position early. Even if you go off curve to drop a Hardened Scales, a 2 drop on turn 3 is still great thanks to the Scales additional plus 1 plus 1 counter. It's like you won't have fallen behind at all. That's how much value the Scales gives. Get 2 in play? Insane. Anyways, be aggressive. You pretty much have to be. Don't be afraid to use your commands aggressively either. Late game board wipes are not that friendly to you, and by that I mean not friendly in the least. Just, just saying. Let's talk sideboard. Thankfully, it's pretty simple. You are only running two colors. Arish and Cleric is the first must-have. The card just destroys red aggressive decks, or really anything aggressive. Most of them just happen to be red. Anyways, it's a great card. Another great card against aggro, Surge of Righteousness. Play a couple of these as well. Gives life and wrecks the attacker. Yes, please. Against any form of Obzan, Valorous Stance and Hidden Dragon Slayer run at least 5-6 to six of these total. Probably 3-4 to four Valorous Stance and a couple Dragon Slayers. Against those decks, you really want these two cards. Lastly, Control Matchup. It can go either way, honestly. Inspiring Call will win you games by itself easily. It doesn't stop Languish, but it hits the hard removal Board Wipes. Exactly what you want, since, well, as we spoke about before, Board Wipes do not feel good at all. It's ugh. So how do you like this version of Harden Scales? There are variations of the strategy that run a few less creatures and play things like Den Protector and Death Miss Raptor, but honestly, I don't think you need them at all. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if there's anything you would change, I would love to hear what you have to say. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.